Hello and welcome to this video on 2D inequalities. Now we've already seen if we have a single variable, just x say, uh, we know how to represent that in some graphical way. So if we have x is greater than or equal to 2, that says that x could be any value that is greater than or equal to 2. And the way we represent that on a number line is we'd have a field circle on 2 to indicate it includes 2 and we do an arrow going upwards to say it could be any value above two. And if you haven't seen my video on representing inequalities on a number line, please watch that before you watch this video. So we've just got one variable here, x. What if we actually had x and y? Let's say we had an inequality in terms of two variables, then how would we represent them? Now we could actually do x is greater or equal to two on a x, y plane. So we've got x and y here. Now let's just say that x was equal to 2. Can you think of a point, any coordinate, where the x value is 2? Well, we could, for example, have 2, 0. 2, 0, the x value is 2. That satisfies this inequality. What about, uh, you could have 2, 1. So you could have 2, 1. Uh, that would also be on here because the x value is 2. And you could see that this would form a line of values all where the x value is 2. So it's going through the x-axis where x is 2, like that. That would be if x is equal to 2, but what if x is greater than or equal to 2? That's saying x can be any value bigger than 2 as well. So can you think of a coordinate where the x value is bigger than 2? Well, you could have, for example, um, 4, 1. That x value is bigger than 2. And we don't care about y. It doesn't say anything about y. So y is unrestricted. There's only a restriction on x. And you can see that we can have all the sort of different points that are right of this particular line here. And that forms a region of possible points where you could be. And anywhere in that region, the x value is greater than or equal to 2. Well, if we had this second example here, we've got y is less than 4. And if we do another x, y axis, now we always start by drawing it as if it was a equality. So we imagine y equal to 4, and we know how to draw y equals 4. It looks like this. So it goes through the y value of 4. And that's because whatever point I pick on this line, if I picked here, the y value is 4. If I picked this point, the y value is 4. Now, the reason that I've done it as a dotted line is because I want to say I'm not actually including the line itself. y is not allowed to be equal to 4. It has to be less than 4. So you're not actually allowed to be on the line, whereas before you were allowed to be on this line because x could be equal to 2. And that's equivalent of saying, well, if I had x is greater than 2, I would know I'd do an open circle like that and an arrow going up. And it's the kind of same here in 2D. You do a dotted line to say you don't want to include the line. But y is allowed to be any value less than 4. So like the y value here, for example, would be 3. That's less than 4. The y value here is 0. The y value here is minus 1, for example. So it can be any point that's below that line here. And so we're going to shade that region. They usually get you to label it with a letter, let's say R, for example. Let's do some more of these. We're going to combine more than one inequality this time. So we've got x is between x is between 1 and 3 inclusive of 1 and 3 because x could be equal to 1 and x could be equal to 3 and we've also got that y is greater than 2 so this time we have to draw two lines we're going to draw um, x is equal to 1 so remember we always draw these as equalities first so x equals 1 so it Roughly, so I'm going to put a 1 there to say it's going through the x value of 1. And if I did x equals 3, it would look like this. And this is saying x could be any value between 1 and 3. So you can see it's going to be anywhere between these two lines. So I'm just going to do a little right arrow to say it, it's going to be greater than 1 and a left arrow to say it's going to be less than 3. So we could be anywhere in this region here and the x value of any point in that region would be between 1 and 3. But there's this extra restriction here. We've got the y is greater than 2. So again, we draw the line y equals to 2 and this is a strict inequality. Y has got to be strictly greater than 2. So we're going to do a dotted line to say we don't include that line itself. So if I put, say, a 2 here, then we're going to have a dotted line going through where y is 2. And it's saying that y is less than 2. So it's going to be under that line because you can see any point I pick below that line, the y value is going to be less than 2, isn't it? Now, if you 
put all these three restrictions together. X is going to be greater than or equal to 1. It's going to be less than or equal to 3, so left of here. And it's the Y value is going to be less than 2, so it's going to be under here. You can see that gives you this region here. And it's infinitely large, it extends on down to minus infinity in the y direction, um, but it's restricted in this kind of region here. Right, let's do another one. We're going to combine even more now. We've got y is lesser or equal to x, we've got x is greater or equal to 0, and we've got y is greater or equal to 0. So I'm going to do my axes again. Now again, the first step is always to draw it as if it was equal, so y equals x. So that's saying that whatever point I pick on the line, the y value is equal to the x value. So for example, if x was 1, then the y value has to be 1, so we've got the point 1, 1. If x was 2, the y value has to be 2, because y equals x, so you'd have 2, 2. And that forms a line of points, and it's a solid line because it's allowed to include y equals x. If it's less than or equal to, it's going to be a solid line. So we get that. So I'm going to draw the equation y equals x on that line. Now we've also got that the x value has to be greater or equal to 0. Now we can see that if I pick any point here in this region, the x value would be positive. Like the x value is a negative here because of negative x, positive x. So it's going to be right of here. And y is going to be greater or equal to 0. So y value is positive. So you can see this is where y is positive. We could draw y equals 0, which is here. That's y equals 0, and it's going to be above it. Now, we haven't yet done the arrow on this one. And there's two ways of doing it. There's a simple way and a kind of quick, cheaty way. One way is just to pick a point, any point, that is on either one side or the other side of the region. So let's just say I picked uh, 3, 0. Yep. Now, what we do is we take that point and we see whether it obeys this inequality or not. So this is the x value here. Of 3, that's the y value. Now, is the y value less than or equal to the x value? Is 0 less than or equal to 3? Well, yes, that's true. So we are on the correct side of this line. If we were wrong, then we would have been on the other side of the line. So we're therefore below the line. But here's the cheaty way, and the cheaty way is basically to see whether y is on the smaller or the bigger side of the inequality. Can you see that y is on the smaller side of the inequality, y is less than or equal to x, and if y is on the smaller side, then you're below the line. If y is on the bigger side of the inequality, then you're above the line. That rule is only applicable if y is a positive term. So we can see we're above this line, we're going to be below this line, and we have to be right of this line. And if we put that all together, that just gives us this region here. So we get that region there. Now let's look at ones with some more difficult equations. We've got x is great equal to 2, y is great equal to x, and we've got x plus y is less or equal to 6. And what's more, that once we get the region, we also want to identify points x, y, where x and y are both integers. That means whole numbers. So let's draw a grid. And this time, I'm actually going to put numbers on my axes. Now, let's draw these lines as if they were equality. So x equals 2, and it includes the 2 because it's greater or equal to, so it's that. And x is greater or equal to 2, so it's right to that line. x is greater or equal to 2 anywhere here. We're going to draw y equals x, so that looks like this. And as per my cheaty trick, y is on the bigger side of the inequality, so therefore we're above the line. Now this one is harder to draw. We've got x plus y equals 6 first. And the best way to do that is just try different values of x and see what y would have to be. So let's just say that x was 0. Now if x plus y is equal to 6 and x is 0, what would y be? 0 plus what is 6? Well, it's 6. If x was 0, y would have to be 6 and to add up to 6. So we've got x is 0, y is 6, which is here. And then you could try a different value of x. Or you could say, well, what if y was 0? If y was 0, then x would have to be 6, because 6 plus 0 equals 6. So we've got x is 6, y is 0 here. And then it's going to be a straight line. This is a straight line equation, so we join that up. And again, it's a solid line, because that's less than or equal to. So I'm going to join that up. And again, using my little trick, 
Y is on the smaller side of the inequality, therefore we're below that line. Now if we put the three together, we can see we're below this line, we're above that line, and we're right of that line. And you can see it's this region here in the middle. And generally, nine times out of ten, the region you get is always the region enclosed by the lines you have. Particularly if you have three lines, it tends to be the region between the three lines. Now the question here is that we want to find integer coordinates, so points x, y, where x and y are whole numbers that are within this region. And remember, we're allowed to be on the line. So, we're somewhere in this region, including on the lines, where do we have whole number coordinates? Well, 2, 2 is a whole number coordinate, because 2 and 2 are both whole numbers. We've also got 2, 3 as well. We've also got 2, 4, that's in the region. And we've got 3, 3 as well, that's in the region as well. So we end up with these four integer coordinates. Right, let's do the next one. Now this time we've got three inequalities, we've got these ones here, and they're strict, you can see it's strictly greater than x minus 2, so we're going to have dotted lines, and I've drawn some quick axes here. Now we need to draw y equals x minus 2. Again, if we just try two different values of x, let's say x was equal to 0, then y would be equal to 0 minus 2, so when x is 0, y is minus 2, it'd be here. And let's just say that x was equal to 8. Then we'd have 8 minus 2, which is 6. The y value would be 6. So we've got 8, 6, which is around about here. And we're going to join it up with a straight line. But it's dotted. We've also got x plus y equals 10. Now, if x was 0, we've got 0 plus 10 would give you 10. So we've got 0, 10 here. Now, if y was 0, or you could try a different value of x, what plus 0 is 10? Well, x would have to be 10. 10 plus 0 is 10. So when y is 0, x is 10, which is going to be here. And again, because it's strict, we have to have a dotted line. And then finally, we've got x is greater than 3. So if we draw x equals 3, it's going to look like that. And again, we want to identify integer coordinates. Now, I know it's slightly hard because I don't have a proper grid here. But this time, we're not allowed to actually be on the line. So, we can see that here. It might help if I say that's 4, 2 there. And that's not on the line, so we don't want that one. But you can see that we've got 4, 3 is here. 4, 3 is there. We've got 4, 4 would be there. And we've got 4, 5 here, etc. And basically, we're going to have all those points that are inside the region like that. And let's do this one more question. So we've got these three inequalities here. We've got 3y plus 2x is greater than 12. We've got y is less than x minus 1. And we've got x is less than 6. Now again, if we say that it's equal to 12, the trick is to say, well, if x was 0, what would y be? So if x was 0, you've got 3y plus 0 is 12. 3y is 12, so y would be 4. So if x is 0, y is 4. Now, if y was 0, so we've got 0 plus 2x is 12. So if 2x is 12, x would be 6. So we can draw a point here. x is 6, y is 0. And it's going to be a dotted line. So we get that. Now we've got y equals x minus 1, we initially draw, and I need to go to negative here, so minus 1. So if x was 0, you've got 0 minus 1 equals minus 1, so y would be minus 1 when x is 0. And if, say, x was 6, 6 minus 1 is 5, so y would be 5 when x is 6. So we're going to have 6, 5, which is roughly here. And we're going to join that up. And it would be easier if you had a grid. And then finally, we've got x equal to 6, so it's going to look like that, with a dotted line again. Now, y is on the bigger side of this inequality, so it means you must be above that line. y is on the smaller side of this inequality, which means we're below that line that we drew. And x is less than 6, so it must be left of that line. And you can see, well, we're above that line, below that line, and left of this line, it must be this region here. And again, if we were identifying integer coordinates, we can just about see that we have like 4, 2 would be in the region, 5, 1 would be in the region, 5, 2 would be in the region, and 5, 3 would be in the region. But that would be much easier to see if you had a proper grid. Now, as a final test your understanding question, we have got this. So I want you to sketch the region for x plus y 
is less or equal to 6. You've also got y is less than or equal to 2x and y is greater or equal to 1. And I'm going to draw a grid for you. So it's just going to go up to 6 on both x and y. So you may want to duplicate this on some square paper. And you may want to pause the video now to have a go at this. Right, let's draw these. We've got x plus y equals to 6. And as before, if x was 0, then y would have to be 6, because 0 plus 6 is 6. So we've got 0, 6 here. Now, if y was 0, x would have to be 6. 6 plus 0 is 6. So we've got x is 6, y is 0. And then it's going to be a bold solid line. So we're going to draw a line like that. Now, if y was equal to 2x, well, if x was 0, 2 times 0 is 0, so y would be 0, so it's going to go through 0, 0. And let's just say that um, x was 3, 2 times 3 is equal to 6, so if x was 3, y would be 6, so 3, 6 we got here. And we're going to join that up with a line again. And then we've also got y equals 1, so that's going to be here. That's where y value is 1. And then let's look at uh, the direction of these inequalities. Y is on the smaller side of this inequality, which means we're below this line. Y is on the smaller side again of this inequality, which means we're below this line. And Y is greater equal to 1. Y is on the bigger side, so we're above this line. Now, if you combine that together, we're below this line. We're below that line, and we're above this line. You can see it's going to be this region here.